Hello, hello, this is Steve D of the YYT, live in Comet Crazy for a bit of an unorthodox deck tech talk. Joining me today, we've got the illustrious, the legendary Wee Andy Thompson of the YYT, whose CV or resume is very impressive. Top cut of the UK re-raise event, uh, finalist of Preston's regionals just last week. And the deck we're going to be talking about today is one of those decks. It's uh, Mono Water Tross, right? Or do you prefer a different name? Um, Tross works, Mono Water, Mono Water Tidus, Mono Water Summons, you know? Mono Water uh, Falka, yeah, we, we, we don't know, we don't know. So I, suppose, oh, I, like the, I suppose this is a, a, it's a summon deck. It's, a, it's a, a big summons deck that is partly lots and lots of summons, but partly the nature of those summons is quite big themselves. How about in, in 30 seconds, in your own words, what is the core of this deck? Okay, so the core of the deck is just like... Uh, it's, oh, it's a weird sort of control deck, it is, and it's a combo deck. Uh, usually a lot of turns will... Your ideal turn is you open Unitidus, but you've also... You just stuff on the map. So like, say this would be your I ideal turn two. So um, like tur turn one Unit, turn two Titus? Yeah. What is it about these cards specifically that is making this deck do the rounds and, and, and treat you so well at a tournament level? Well, you know, like, the entire the entire summon archetype is designed around you know, and Titus is just a very problematic card. It puts... Basically, this card says you've got seven turns after I drop. Or you lose. Well, that's it's, the thing that there are so few actually efficient answers to Titus. Yes, I thought it, it, gonna... if, if you play a wind card or a water card or whatever, like, are you going to board wipe that early in the game just for a non-targeting way to kill it? It's it's a very difficult card to to not lose a forward and you draw three cards in the process. Well, in Final Fantasy terms, if we're going to use the terminology, it's like casting done. So, like, your done counter as your damage, and it's it's just so hard to interact with, like. You feel bad losing a guy to like bounce and I like your opponent draws three for like your troubles. So, oh, okay, uh, why don't you show us a little bit more of the deck? Um, the other cards that I would consider the most important are Shoss Folka. Uh, Folka is kind of in the same vein of Tidus, it's just like completely un uninteractable, but Shoss with Folka making Folka is. I know people would try to read this, but it's in German. But like, <laughs> uh, Folka's bounce to hand ability, essentially being free every turn, is... Sure, yeah, and, and the, the important thing about Tross is that it's one's per turn, yours and your opponent's. You, you can be bouncing something to hand during your own turn and it will counter it, and then again during your opponent's turn before they go to combat. Effectively, they have two less attackers every single turn than they think they do. And that adds in to the ever-lamented Marshery, been able to, like, been able to draw off of a discard and, like, Filling the proverbial fuel, the proverbial fire that is Marshall with more wood. Well, not to skip to the good stuff too quickly, but what are the, what's the sort of ratios for this deck? Uh, how, how many summons are we talking about here for Polka and Uh 24. 24? Okay, is, is there a particular maths behind this? Um, 24 gives you 8, if I'm correct, Marshall activations. Yeah, sure. So it just it feels better than like the full car, the uninteractive ability of full car is bolstered by the fact that like you can play stuff like Sildra, which allows you to play seven backups. So the the, the backup count in this deck is as low as seven. Uh, yes. Have you ever felt kind of screwed by that, for want of a better expression? And no, uh, basically if you open one backup in a tie, that's your you're happy. Be oh, okay, yeah, sure. sure. I, I guess I can appreciate that because by the time you need to worry about it, you'll have the benefit of three more turns worth of draws, you know, or, or you'll, you'll be that much deeper into your, your decision pool. Yeah, I'll be able to elaborate a lot more as we go on because I'll end up describing the entire backup line. And yeah, sure. uh, go ahead at your own pace. Yeah, so, sure. Now that we've shown the important stuff, we'll start like, piling out. So, start, you have like three Tidus. <laughs> I, I don't know really what to tell you, it's one of the most unfair forwards in the game, one of the most unfair forwards ever printed. And is that just because of how bad it feels to interact with, or, or uh, do, do you think that the... Is, is there something I'm missing here about Tidus other than the obvious it is going to hit you and there's not much you can do about it? Yes, the the, the fact that Tidus reads cannot be blocked is just quite frankly toxic. <laughs> because, as I said, it gives you a basically a doom counter for your opponent, then they either need to DPS race you, or they need to like get rid of Tidus, who is one of their guys, and you draw three. And do you feel like you can adapt to whatever your opponent tries to do? You know, it, it, are you more afraid if they try and race you? Or are you more afraid if they bite the bullet and kill Tidus? See, I, I would say race, but this deck plays as forty-two percent EXs, so <laughs> more than likely. I feel like we're going to need to see a few of those. Um, yeah. Feel free to lay the rest out. Yeah, well, I was going to say more than likely if they try to DPS race you or bully, bully you, they will get punished for it. 
Um, as mentioned, Folka. Folka with 24 summons is kind of sick. It's convenient as well for staying ahead in the damage race. It's very hard for your opponent to race your Tidus when Folka can tax your opponent out of all of their cheap things. You know? Yes, like in primarily I feel your best matchup is Avalanche because as soon as Folka have been whenever you want, as soon as they enter combat, you just bounce the Avalanche members with effects or you bounce Barret to like, remove their haste. And with the amount of summons, if they tar try to target Folka, you're too, I would guess, main forwards. Sure. Completely uninteractable with. If you count monsters as uh, forwards as well, they are relatively, as we discussed in a previous video that might come out before or after this, everything in the deck that is forwards and deals damage is very, very hard to interact with, which leads on to three lightning. Okay, is this another anti-race tool or...? Uh... Uh, yes, if they get too, too aggressive, you just remove their best forward. Um, as I said, very hard to interact with again because Say for example on stack, you can just go Sildra, search a lightning, remove lightning from a stack that may kill her. Right, okay, and yeah, it's, it's uh, the, the dreaded end phase again, you return at the end of turn, and at that point your opponent can't play anything else during that turn. Yes, and they can't interact with it at all, and if they play too many forwards, they lose a forward. And, you know, the most controversial YYT card, the <laughs> unanimous decision, Mercury. Oh, everybody loves Mercury. Uh, two is an interesting number. Uh, what's the logic behind two as opposed to one or three? Because I know a lot of people play one because your one copy theoretically never dies, so long as you don't play it too early, and there's always something that it can save itself with. W w why is two the magic number? Um, Zidane and damage. If, <laughs> if you're playing against Storm and a Zidane hits a Mercury, they shouldn't play it until they're ready to win. Of but, course, because you, it's going to be so easy for you with Folka to bounce a, a stolen card back to your hand. Because the bounce will always return to the, the, the owner's hand instead of the card control. Yes, I bet you a check what was going on that one for finals. <laughs> but it's like another un uninteractable card. If you play this card correctly, it's an uninteractable with. There's like one interactable, maybe two interactable forwards if you count one of the monsters. Okay. And, like, it's 2 CP, so it's like, I mean, I'm not fussed if you interact with it, but primarily for an interactable forward, so it should play a really low forward count, because you will just push through and your opponent can't get rid of them, they're a headache, you know, etc, etc. And, and if I'm not very much mistaken, that's basically all of the forwards. Uh, there's one more. One more, okay. Uh, Torum. Now, there's a caveat behind this. There's two builds I like to play. It, honestly, this is more for Zidane hate because... You know, Alright, is it take away its haste, take away the steal ability or something? Uh, yes, because um, when I was playing Michael, Zidane was like a big, big problem. Uh, that might just be like, you know... Survivorship bias? Confirmation bias? Uh, confirmation bias, but, I would say. Michael bias? But um, if you want to play like, anti-aggro, you can also play a Cloud of Darkness. But for okay, that's, that's a, a retro one we've not seen in quite a while. It's it's just good for like it's good for rogue if like you know you're struggling kind of with rush one decks. of those weird cards that will save you in Smith. Yeah, Swarries maybe if, like there's quite a lot of Swarries at your locals. It, like maybe Porum isn't doing the job. I I guess uh, I'm curious about some of the matchups in general, but we'll get into that when we've seen some more of the deck. Uh, so given that that's all of the forwards, what direction do we go in next? Do we want to see the ammunition on Volka, or uh, should we go to Tross at his buddies? I'll, I'll let I, you decide. I think the the monsters will be a lot more interesting to start off with. So we'll start yeah, off with. Just, you know, the one interactable monster, Optimamoth, which still, it's interactable when I decide it's interactable. Oh sure, you mean like with the number of backups and when it is, it, it is unconditionally a forward for as long as the rules text is, is live. Yeah. Yes, and it, uh, one of, you could go, you, you I've could seen, theoretically I've seen some play, play more of it, but uh, do you think one is just a magic number? I, I like one, but it's a primarily a space issue. Like, one feels good because you can search it off of Sildra and... I feel in a vacuum, and against Storm, the following monster is a lot more important. Three Tross. Three Tross, yeah, sure. So, uh, for the uninitiated, it's kind of the namesake of the deck. Uh, all of your bounces will now be drawing a card for the first bounce each turn. And then on damage three, it just turns into this absolute powerhouse of three card advantage. Yes, it's like, um, you can just make it a forward at any point, and even if you don't have Volk out, just being able to go attack, draw a card, and bounce one of their forwards is... Ridiculous, quite frankly. <laughs> and three blue worm. Um, on an interact, like drawing a card, essentially, it's like 
a zero CP forward. Sure, it's it, it, just that simple kind of a cantrip thing. It's like a Viking that doesn't die to Fina. It only dies when you let it die by, you know. It does act as a pseudo sort of damage please as well, because it's, it's sitting there and it's very hard to interact with. And when I decide I can win... It, it, it's almost like a, a piece that you can install and then wait for an, an OTK is, is the vibe I got from it. It, it. it just sits there, it draws you a card. If you play the playset, it lets you play a 47 card deck but then deal 3 damage on the turn that you pull off the Mega Bounce. So. Yes, it could be Marshery, Folkar, Lightning Flare as well, but yeah, sure. Optimamoth. It's, as I said, it's just a sort of Anaclase, the fact that you can make it interactable anytime you want it. It's, it. Monsters are just notoriously so hard to interact with. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm curious if that will feed into the, the matchups of the deck at all. But first, uh, th this deck is what? 50% summons, but we've not seen any yet. So 24, so 48% summons. Sure, okay. Uh, in order of uh, most relevant to least relevant, if you would like. Oh, of course. So the most relevant summon? I had it in order, like, uh, CP cost. Oh, right, okay, sure, sure. Um, there's maybe a clear job out. The glue of the deck most relevant summon is... Give me a second, put it the right way. Sildra. Sure, so, so so Seldra is going to find you everything in the right order, it lets you get away with the low backup number, fills the break zone for bashery, stuff like that, yeah, okay, I, I can see it. I can see it. Uh, the rescue can give like any significance you want to, like some are obviously more powerful than others, but like they aren't as important as Seldra, so I will okay. just do them in CP cost. Sure, sure. Uh, two cost Leviathan, this is very good against fire, because Susano is, I think, one of the few ways you can get rid of Tidus. Uh, Tidus and Falka, yeah, uh, neither of their ability and protections are going to get around Susano, so yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Leviathan helps extremely well with that aspect. Um, it's just generally good as well, like there is, as I said, 21 EXs, so 42% 40, EXs. So just EX draw card is generally it's good. Uh, 3 cost Leviathan. Last from the past as well, like the Cloud of Darkness. Yeah, a couple of open cards. Um, it generally feels good to hit an EX. If you have a Marshery and a Yuna on board, costing one to bounce a card, like ridiculous with Tross. It feels really, really good with Tross. There's quite a lot of bounce. And that, that's the thing, it's so easy to forget that all of these bounces will cantrip with Tross. So for this one, I'll put, like, I said I was going to put them in order, but this is a very relevant point. Three plus Leviathan. Three copies too. Wow. Okay. So th th this is what we don't see all that often. Uh, draw two cards and then put one on the top or bottom. Okay. Okay. So there's two primarily reasons for this. You back this up. I hate light cards in general. And <laughs> let I will refuse to play a light card unless I can discard that or bottom deck it somehow. Sure. That, that's coming from your backing as a Pasoya player back in the days. Yes. Yes, it is. So um, it has two aspects. It will be the main one and the you know, the kind of red herring, the most important one, is stacking a Remora. Stacking a Remora just... Oh, it. sure, okay. Uh, the, the, this saw a bit of use uh, in the Doga meta in Opus 14, basically because you wanted to play a lot of summons, and you wanted the deck to, I don't know, be as hard to attack into or hard to race as possible. Maybe it came out as a, a bit of mirror tech. I would say that it is, it is actually kind of castable in this deck when you've got double reduction of Yuna and Mashiri. But the fact is an EX helps more than it hurts. Yeah, I, I, as you said, the mirror is very, like, very, very important that you get the right EXs to get rid of the Artidus. Sure. And being able to do that in the mirror is exceedingly strong. It's also strong just like if they attack in with a guy, just kill a guy, draw one, kill a guy, like, draw another one, like, draw two for free. Then, like, you're basically plus one, plus two at that point. And the other big summon you want off it is Leviathan. Um, it's... That bounce makes sense. Uh, do you ever get much use out of the Recursion or the top decking Light and Dark? Uh, the Recursion's quite useful for Lightning specials. Um, if I'm running if I'm running low and forwards and quite a grindy game, it'll get me back a Folka, it'll get me back a Thetis. If maybe Porum is needed to Toolbox, because Porum is interactable, being the odd forward out, it's quite good, it's quite efficient to get her back. But I've found that it's just basically down to hard draw card most of the time. Like, I will take back what I think is a strong forward, or if I can, a lightning. Yeah, and I suppose when, like, if you imagine this costing four because of Mashiri and Yuna, 
and you're getting a card back and you're drawing a card off trust it's, it starts to kind of feel like part of the free bounce engine yeah sure yeah and the next most important remora target to fill in interesting and it's another card that i don't think i've seen used in a really really long time uh, why is now it's time and why over the one cp one uh Winty, i found zidane very very hard to get rid of not just the the wind the, the new one the new one right yeah i think it was confirmation bias but i will give the caveat if you're playing cloud of darkness over forum or if you feel it's better for your meta you can also play this cuckoo instead oh sure yeah okay the, the, this is kind of like a sideboard tech or something functionally it's the same ex of drawing a card but it's not about killing stuff <laughs> yeah it's about negating effects if that you feel that stronger for your meta then you know play it yeah, sure. But th sure. Like, this is the caveat of, like, say, a 54 card list and you cut one of the three. I would say it's down to your meta. Maybe in a more slurry based meta, this Kukulun's a lot better, but I find you've got at least a good to decent matchup against slurries. And, and that's the last summon, right? Uh, or we're coming up to the Second last. Summon. So, Leviathan. Um, just basically an alert. It's an EX. Hitting it on, hitting it for EX feels really good. Well, I can imagine, yeah, I imagine there'll be some times that you can stack it with this Leviathan. It's funny, actually, because uh, I've been playing a bit of Mono Fire Magissa with the Ifrit from Opus 7, and at the time, the Opus 7 summons, with the exception of Yojimbo, looked terrible. You know, the, the, they only really do things if you hit them as an EX, but is it the case that Mashery and Fulka just give you enough of a punch factor that you don't mind if you draw them, because at least it's still a water summon? That's pretty much it. I, I, as your arguably your weakest summon like it's the summon you probably won't cast unless you really really need to sure yeah yeah but i guess, it's, I guess you could see that it feels better to hit this in ex and this in ex <laughs> yeah. like draw but a some bounce is better than no bounce yeah sure and that just uh, leaves us with the rest of the backups right we know about you know uh yeah the well sorry you know you know I'll, I'll leave a little space in the middle here i'll, I'll, I'll move these uh move these over here you know as pretty self-explanatory like Three of them, like three of them, most waterless. Do you want to draw her? Like reducing your summons. It's so water soul methods with making three three cost summons plus two, or that, six that, plus five. That's spot. Been doing it ever since Pamphlet. And the next one's Kamari. Interesting. Okay. Kamari is Kamari's a silver bullet in the fire matchup. And silver bullet because it's fetchable by Sildra. I have to ask uh, regarding Kamari's strategy. Who do you protect? Who's your optimal target? Tidus. Okay, okay, because Volka can kind of protect herself, or...? Because he exits at this. Oh, sure, okay. Like, um, yeah. against Swaries, like... This came up in a couple of testing games where, like, I wouldn't attack in against Swaries or any sort of fire list that I know has EXs. Because you respect the Elves, right? Yes. Then making your Tidus immune EXs is... You know, it's unfair, quite frankly. Uh, it's, it's important to, I guess, as a, a ruling to say that Kamari does generate a field ability. This is a field ability and not like an auto that cancels uh, burn damage. It's, it's a fundamental field ability, so it does apply to EXs. Kamari does resist EXs. Then I think Kamari EX, the only two things your opponent can play to stop that is Titan and Chanto. And you can answer Titan kind of with Remora, Remora or Kukulun. Yeah, sure, okay. Okay. Um, but everything else, mastery just bounce your own field. The evoker, evoker is broken with Sildra. <laughs> it's that it's... high IQ Princess Sarah, you know. You, you don't you don't want to play Sarah Princess Sarah in this deck because if your Princess Sarah gets Amaterasu, you now can't play mastery. Yeah, and it, you can't search Princess Sarah off of Sildra. There are terms where, like, just to ramp out, I'll just go Sildra, search evoker, search Kamari. Even if Kamari is like a dead herring in the match. Or if I want to send out my deck and I've got the resources to do so, Meryl Web. Two Meryl Web, okay. So my observation here is one, two, three, four backups. You're never going to have more than four backups because that's how many named backups you have in the deck. That's three seven. is, three is I've found to be the golden ratio. Okay, and is that just because of the number of three goes forwards in the deck or is there, is there anything else that I'm missing that makes three such a good number? Pretty much that. Yeah. Your summons cost five, four. So nothing should cost more than like, more than three, more than like within a mathematical number of three, because Optimum is three. This is five, but if you're actually casting it, you could just marshal it, or if you really need to cast it, you don't mind paying the five for a card that's powerful or a card that's powerful. Yeah, okay. Well, when they're live, they're really, really live. 
I'm going to throw a few sort of matchup things at you. Uh, first off, in one word, what is your best matchup? Avalanche. What is your Avalanche win percentage? 100 so far. 100 so far. I've not, I've not in, played in, too in, many. In, in a, a fair game where they open quite well, in a best of 100, what would it be? Um, it maybe be like, if I was to guess, maybe 820, I might be wrong, or probably eight, eight, more experienced okay. players. Uh, what is your worst match? Uh, wind of any kind, like Sky Pirates or Storm. Okay, okay, sure. I, I think I see where this sort of lasts in the, in the meta. So we've covered that. Uh, what's the strategy for Avalanche? I'm just going to throw a few matchups at you here. What Folk are you Atros. doing? Volk Atros, yeah, okay. Uh, um, as soon as they enter combat, bounce all their cards with Vex. Or if they've just played them this turn, bounce Barret so they lose haste. Sure, okay, that, that's you, pretty succinct. You, 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 you let them go into combat, but then at the attack preparation step, that's when you bounce, because if you bounce them as they enter combat, they're perfectly entitled to replay them. So, say for example, um, a, the a theoretic scenario where I have folk, I say four cards in hand, three of which are summons, sure. and the cross on board, they've just played a two avalanches, um, and a barret in the same turn. The, they have haste. You can bounce the barret to... You can bounce the barret to stop them having haste, but I found if you stop and party attack in general, so say you just, it doesn't really matter which one, which one you think they have more of in hand if it's in grave, bounce one of the avalanche, then they, no, they only get to attack once. Sure. Then your next turn, you draw from the cross, so you bounce for nothing. Then the next turn after, you bounce the other avalanche, and then you bounce it for nothing again because you draw one. Then you've just added more fire into the sure. Okay, uh, ice, wind, or yeah, let, let, let's go through a little bit of the wind spectrum. Uh, I, I know that you said wind in general is bad. Is there a worst kind of wind, ice, wind, storm? I, ice, wind, storm is like I've been playing against Michael, and Michael is a ridiculously good player, so like I would say it's maybe 70 30. In, like, in the ice, wind, maybe, yeah. Yes. What, what, what do you do to try your hardest? Go fast, basically, rush. Um, blue worm, as soon as you see it. Play it. Don't keep it as like uh don't keep it as like a red herring or like whatever. Attack with it as soon as you can. <laughs> okay, ju just because you need those games to be open. They, they will win the long game through infinite value, so you, you that need, to, and you need to get it over with. Yeah, and yeah, okay. There's no point wasting like there's no point letting Lock read kill a forward. I can only imagine Lock is gonna be quite painful against this deck when it can kill Tross. You need to hold your Tross correctly. And with with bounce what in Storm do you personally want to bounce? Don't... Rosa, maybe? You don't want to bounce uh, Goshu, you don't want to bounce Locke, you don't want to bounce... Locke sometimes just to protect it, or just, just so that I can replay it every turn. I mean, as the water player. Oh, right, yeah, sure. That's, like, That's a good point, yeah. Yeah, nothing, nothing. Everything in, like, everything in Storm has a broken on entry, so it's like, it's very hard to play against. You Rosa's to... basically it, but Rosa's going to be sometimes resistant to these. I'm, yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to catastrophize and say it as an unwinnable match, because... You know, Everything's a little bit winnable, but uh, it's, it's, it's about the percentages. What else is uh, big at the moment? Uh, I guess Sky Pirates, have you, have you any sort of strategy for that? Sky Pirates, I assume it's the same thing, but I like I can test against Sky Pirates tonight and update you, but I'm going to be honest, I haven't played Sky Pirates too much. We're planning to have a testing session Thursday, but sure, I can okay. write notes in the comments once we've tested it. So how about sort of like ice or hand disruption in general? Uh, have you had much experience against that? or? Um... Uh, ice? Do, do, do you anticipate that being easy? Ice and hand destruction, you've just, like, basically, unless they've got Titan, because um, in top 16, I played against this exact deck, which is what inspired me to play it. Okay. And my strategy was Titan, bounce Titan, 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 until they couldn't tie the scope. Okay, anymore. yeah, yeah, sure. Get, get, rid of, get rid of them in an untargetable way. I can see Titan Lord of Crags being quite painful against this deck. So Titan's your main problem, but if you do stuff like you can know, hold your hold your Leviathan, then just bounce your Titus back. Then just don't bounce the Titan back to hand unless you're going for a game, or just let it sit there. Sure, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I have only one more question for you, and it's it's my favourite little interaction involving Paul Roman, that smug downward pointing finger. Have you ever blanked your own Octomammoth to save it? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet, but one of these days. But it will come up at one point. The I prefer like the forum if you can get if you can get to the point where you can just buy a cape, go forum two columns and poking. I really noticed that in Sky Pirates as well, but uh, I don't want to get too off topic here. Anything else you you feel like you'd like to say about the deck or a, any sort of next steps that you're going to try and evolve it with? Um, I think it's just it's honestly test against wind quite a bit. Um, 
Avalanche wants you to learn the matchup, but like this, this infamously yeah. counters Avalanche. It, yeah, it feels so, like a bit of an algorithm, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like we are in a triangle format, so it's like this loses to win in a theoretical world. Sure. Because it goes sure. to win, but you know. In Magic Coin Flip, right? Yeah. Okay. Avalanche, it's, it's Pokemon, it's like Charmander, yeah, Bulbasaur, okay. Squirtle. <laughs> right, yeah, okay. okay. It's like that's the best way to look at it. So, like, um, yes. this is, I guess, Squirtle, which beats Charmander, which is Avalanche, and Wind is Bulbasaur. Because green, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, see, you know, I see the pattern. I, I can do color association. Anything <laughs> uh, else at all to add? Uh, no, I, like, the deck is toxic, but I find it quite a fun deck to play. It's very reactionary. Yeah, well, that's actually for you, right? Yeah, it's like, even Folka. Folka is, as I say, Trust Folka feels just unfair. Like, sure, sure. one free pound, like, one free bounce per turn, and Peel and Marshery, like, you know. A a any particular memorable plays from the regionals and assorted events you've taken it to? Uh, not the play, but the game in general. My top four game was one of the hardest games of Final Fantasy I've ever had to play. Guy was ridiculously good. Um, his entire strategy was Althea, King, King Tycoon, which, as you can imagine, t King Tycoon Oh one yeah, of the sure. Few sure. cards that can interact with monsters. Shoving all of these back to hand for all the fact that they've got on entry effects, you're gonna to struggle to deal damage. A hundred percent. So I had to play that game with one Folka and one Folka only. <laughs> and and you got there, right? So hard. Yeah, I won, but it was lightning as well. Kind of helps for this, and Tidus can bounce, but you'll deck yourself out eventually. Sure. Yeah, I guess I could see that. Um, but yeah, like that was the game itself was just. It was memorable because it was one of the hardest fought games I've ever played, and it just all all the switches that you finally got there. Uh, thank you very much for your time and your energy in explaining this one to us. Uh, if you at home have got any questions for Mister Thompson, please feel free to stick them in the chat down below. Also, there will be a deck list for your copy pasting needs. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll speak to you all as soon as I have the energy to talk about something that's not a mastery deck. <laughs> Take care. Bye bye.